Welcome to Higher Education Matters. I'm Jeb Spaulding, Chancellor of the Vermont State Colleges System, and this is a monthly program where we explore the various issues that are of interest in the higher education world. Uh, we talk about challenges, opportunities, issues, uh, and we have a, a variety of guests on that help us to explore those. Today, we're happy to welcome Tom Cheney, who is the director of uh, 20, 75 by 2025 VT. Is that 70 right? by 2020. So what, what did I say? <laughs> 75. Okay. By, it's okay. Confusing. Yeah. 70 by 2025. What is that, by the way? 70. What, what does it mean, Tom? So what it means is uh, that there's a state goal to have 70% of Vermonters have some sort of educate, continued education after high school, whether okay. it's a degree or some sort of credential um, by 2025. Okay. And we can get into more of kind of how we Yeah, so 70% is the percentage of people that we want to do it in 2025 is when we want to have it done by. Bingo. All right. Okay, and we'll talk a little bit about why that's so important. In fact, we probably ought to start there, but I would say that since this is June, uh, and it's the month where students in Vermont graduate from high school, our viewers might be interested to know that around 2,500 high school graduates have no plans for any post-secondary education at all. Uh, and that is, uh, I think, a real problem for their economic prospects and also for the state of Vermont's future. And your effort is part of that. It's much bigger than that. But, you know, that, that issue right there is uh, in terms of trying to get more students to go on to post-secondary education uh, is, is a got to be a high high priority issue for the state of Vermont. Yeah, absolutely is. And, and when you look at that, those uh, students who don't have a plan, uh, what it means out of the class of 2018 is that about 60%, probably just under 60% of them will continue on to, to post-secondary education this fall in some shape, shape, form, or way. But that means that about 40% aren't. Right. And when, you, when we actually poll seniors uh, around this time of year, 70% of them say they'll go. So we actually lose 10% of seniors, uh, or new, new graduates, right. I suppose, between now and the fall, uh, those who actually had some plans, but just for some reason or another couldn't actually get across the finish line and, and walk into their first class. And do we have any, any ideas as to why that happens? You know, if 70% say they're to go and only 60 or a little less actually go, what, what changed? You know, I think that the, the verdict's still out, but I think of a number of potential things. Uh, one is some people may simply over-report. Um, say, um, I would like to, but haven't taken the necessary steps to, to do so prior to graduating. Others, there's a lot of steps you have to take uh, between June and, you know, August, September when you go to school, right. um, whether that's figuring out your financial aid or um, figuring out where you're going to live and kind of the housing situation, whether it's on campus or off campus, uh, a variety of different steps you have to take that can hold people up, right. uh, whether they're, they come into financial hurdles or, you um, for the first time, you're on your own and figuring out your education path. You yeah. don't have the guidance counselor right down down the hall to help you. So uh, there are a number of reasons. But you know, a couple of interesting sort of additions to that is that uh, it's around 60% go on. If you look at it by socioeconomic status, uh, the lower income Vermonters is more like 40% are going and 60% aren't going. So yeah. really, those that could probably use the uh, help in terms of upward mobility are going in significantly less numbers than, than the uh, upper income levels. And that that yeah. doesn't bode well for no. our, our, you know, trying to make uh, address an inequality problem. Right. There's a real equity issue. You know, even when you look at those who come from uh, whether their parents went to post-secondary education of some sort or they have more financial security in their homes, it still is around 60 percent. So right. that still isn't where we want it to be. Uh, but then you look at those who uh, didn't have parents who went to post-secondary education or come from homes who are low-income families, the rates are much, much lower. And that's just to continue on right. to, to college or, or training. But that's not even to complete. You look at the completion numbers right. and it, it tells an even more it, it does. Story. It does. And actually, just for the viewers might be interested to know, I know it's a little bit off topic, but it's, it's related in a, in a way that actually, whereas Vermont has one of the highest high school graduation rates in the country uh, and whereas you know on a relative basis sure there are there are too many students that are graduating from high school not ready for college and work but compared to the rest of the country we do pretty well there too when it comes to continuation on to, to college we have the lowest continuation rate in new england and very lackluster nationally so we obviously have some room for improvement another program we could talk about 
Well, <clears throat> what are all the ways we're addressing that? That's certainly, you know, a priority for the Vermont State Colleges as the, you know, the de facto extension of the public uh, school system into the post-secondary years. Uh, you know, we have a responsibility to try to, to uh, help more Vermonters get some post-secondary education. But, Tom, I'm interested, you know, with 70 by 2025, why is that so important to the state of Vermont? Yeah. So, so maybe we'll, we'll go back to 2015, 2016. I know, Jeb, you were a part of a lot of these conversations um, as the, I think, new chancellor at the time yeah. of the state colleges. And there was this kind of conversation among stakeholders between the, the pre-K to 12 community, the higher education and training uh, community, employers, government, and the kind of nonprofit civic groups, as well as the philanthropists in the, in the state. And they said, uh, okay, we've got a, we know we have a problem here. And we know that we don't have the education levels that we really need to ensure that employers uh, have a really skilled workforce. And we also know, uh, in addition to kind of that economic side, there's a real strong economic argument. We need 66%, according to Georgetown um, uh, Center for Education and the Workforce, something like that. Yeah. Uh, we, we need 66% of Vermonters to have some sort of post-secondary education or training uh, in order to meet our workforce needs. So, so that kind of drives one, one angle. Uh, the other angle is that we know that if you have post-secondary education, you're going to be more successful um, in, in terms of financial security, uh, in terms of uh, contributing, having more capacity to contribute to your communities. And those are things, really strong values that we have as Vermonters. And, and then, then there's all these other pieces around government and um, less, if you're more financially stable, there's going to be less uh, need f to kind of tap into some state resources. So there's a lot of different interests here, um, whether it's the employer uh, wanting a skilled workforce, whether it's the employee wanting to have a really great life, life and be able to focus on family, and then, and then whether it's kind of, you know, kind of more broadly the state interest in terms of having uh, a strong economy and, and a kind of a, a vibrant um, um, civic vitality. Yeah, so, you know, you mentioned the Georgetown Center there. Uh, they also did a study a couple of years ago that said that I think it was 99% of the new jobs created since the Great Recession, which was, you know, I mean, I hate to say it, it's coming on 10 years ago now, but, uh, you know, 99% of the jobs required some level of post-secondary education. Uh, and I think 70% a bachelor's degree. So, right. you know, I mean, the fact that we have 40% of, uh, of the high school uh, graduates not going on and an awful lot of, you know, uh, adult Vermonters without some level of post-secondary education is a real problem economically for them as individuals. And you made that point. And, and you also made the point, Tom, that it's, it's not just uh, an economic argument. I mean, it is, yes, you know, if, if you, there are all those things that show, well, if you have an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree or a certificate, here's how much you, on average, you might expect to make more than the others, and those are significant numbers. But you mentioned that they also, people that have post-secondary education uh, tend to participate in their local communities more. It's actually, they also happen to have better health outcomes, right. you know, and they live longer. Uh, and they don't get in trouble with the law as much. You know, there are exceptions to that, but you know, if you want your children or grandchildren to actually be healthier, have better economic prospects, don't get in trouble with the law and live longer, uh, some level of post-secondary education is, is very important to them. So from an individual perspective, very, very important. You know, you, you, you hear the governor, uh, and all, I mean, all governors recently have talked about, they, they run into employers that, uh, you know, uh, can't fill their, their, the, the open positions because people aren't adequately trained. Is that part of what we're trying to address here? Yeah, ab absolutely. I think that was a big push from the employer community in this conversation right. that kind of kickstarted it. Uh, and, and you're right, when, you know, when that, I first started hearing that refrain from employers, I thought I was newly graduated and thought, well, I don't know about that. Right. Um, the truth is there are plenty of opportunities out there for Vermonters, not in every single field, but right. in many, many fields. And, and so we've got to figure out uh, what are what training is required for those fields and how do we get as many Vermonters as possible right. in those career pathways and education pathways to ensure that we can fill those, those so pathways. I sort of should have said at the top uh, if people you know during this program we'll say it again at the end but I should have said at the top if people want to find out more about 70 by 2025 VT uh, how do they how would they do that Tom yeah, so we have a website um, that's continually being updated, and we'll have some, some major updates to it later this year. But uh, it's 70by2025vt.org. So 70 okay. 
and then an X, right. 2025VT.org. Okay, or they could even probably just Google 70 by 2025VT yep. and they'd, they'd get there. And they would get there yeah, quickly. and I, I think that's exciting. And you, you you know, there are opportunities, you have working groups and other things like that. So if there's people that want to get involved yeah. to be helpful, they yeah. could do that. Yeah, right? yeah, absolutely. Okay, that sounds great. So, you know, we've talked a, a little bit about, um, you know, a large percentage of high school graduates not going on to college. Yeah. Uh, I also have in the back of my mind, and I was hoping you could kind of like clarify f for me that, uh, you know, even if we got all of the students that are graduating from high school to go on to college or to some, you know, pre apprenticeship yeah. or get some kind of a credential, yeah. uh, that wouldn't really fill the, uh, the need. Is, is right. that right? So w what right. does that mean? What's right. the significance of that? Yeah, so we, yeah, we've talked a lot about the focus on kind of the, the pre-K to 12 and the continuation rates uh, and the completion rates uh, of those more, which you, what are often called the more traditional pathways for students. But it's really important that we get adults back into the system. Uh, an adult could be as young as 18, but someone who just didn't go on to post-secondary education directly from high school. And we ought to make sure we get them back into the system because there's about, right now, 60% of, or it's not 60%, 60,000 uh, Vermonters who have some college but no degree. And, and then there's a much larger number, um, I would I'd say that number is probably much higher in terms of those that maybe started some sort of credential program as well. So there's a lot of people that began school but didn't finish it. And so we want to make sure we get them back into the system and make sure that they have the skills they need uh, to be successful in their career, but also to retool as right as kind of the, the economy changes and as mm -hmm. the workforce demands change. Well, you know, I mean, the Vermont State Colleges system uh, wants to be and is, and there are several people that either are at some of our colleges or at the system level that participate with, with this effort. Uh, and it's, uh, it's totally aligned with our strategic priorities. I mean, you know, the, the, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a tough time to be in the, in the college business these days. Uh, and people sort of hear about that in the news and read it in the paper. but probably don't realize that uh, across the whole country, uh, the uh, uh, smaller rural tuition dependent residential colleges are under a, a great deal of pressure. And we have six strategic priorities to address those challenges. Uh, and they are really aligned with wh what you're about. So for example, you know, we want to work with you and other partners to uh, increase the number of, of high school graduates going on to college and, and then succeeding, you know, yeah. staying there and actually graduating. Because yeah. you kind of mentioned earlier that, I mean, it's, you know, you know, not enough go, but even more, uh, you know, once they get there, too many of them don't make it out the other end. So both of those are really important to us. Uh, also, uh, you know, we are uh, all about uh, serving adults more. You know, that's our, our, our third strategic right. priority is to actually serve the not the typical high school right. graduate going on full time but people that actually maybe they might be 22 23 24 and didn't go and now they realize they need a something and maybe they're not ready for an, a degree but you know a, a, an actual industry recognized credential or some kind of meaningful uh, certificate mm -hmm. so you know you see ccv uh, community college of vermont one of our, our colleges within the system developing um, uh, certificate programs in bookkeeping and uh, you know medical assistance and uh, certified production technician. We have hospitality credentials up at Northern Vermont University Linden, uh, Vermont Technical College doing all kinds of certificates. I I, I, I hope that's uh, helpful for what, what you guys are, are all about. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and I think we should give credit where credit's due. When we talk about how 70 by 2025 was created, um, it was no in no small part due to your leadership and the leadership of the state colleges to make this uh, not just something that you take on in on your campuses, which is crucial, but something you say, we need everyone at the table to handle this. This is a Vermont issue. This is a state issue that we have to tackle at every single level. And so the leadership of the state colleges, of VSAC, um, of the McClure Foundation, and many, many other uh, organizations, including the University of Vermont and um, the independent colleges and, and many, many employers, you know, really drove this. And I, so a big thanks to the state colleges. And, and, it's, and you're modeling what every partner really needs to do, which is to, to take the priorities of 70 by 2025 and say, how can, how can we in our way contribute to this? Mm -hmm. And so for an employer, for example, it might be saying, uh, how are we ensuring that our workforce has continued opportunity to uh, get further training, training that can support us here uh, at our business, but also training that supports our, 
our, the, the well-being of our workforce, whether they stay with us or they don't. Uh, and, and so that's, I think, a role that employers can take on. I think that uh, you know, government, it's what policies can we shape to really support the efforts of the state college, support the efforts of the employers uh, to make sure that we do have a skilled workforce. So there's a lot of opportunities, you know, like, like you said, for partners to kind of model the right behaviors to, to help move this forward. And in your experience, now you've been uh, the director of 70 by 2025 VT for a year or so, Tom? I, yeah, I, yeah, it's been a little bit over a year. And in your experience, do you think that we're making any progress in terms of getting, uh, you know, the community at large, the state of Vermont, yeah. the employer, the, the civic community, yeah. the private individuals to understand the importance of this effort yeah. or, or, you know, how do we how do we do that? Yeah, you know, I, I think we are. It's it's not um, an easy conversation to have. I think it's it's one that that is complicated, and multifaceted, and but at the same time, it's pretty simple. Uh, we want to have a strong economy. We, we want to have strong communities, and education is one way to do that. There's many others. You know, as you mentioned, whether it's focusing on healthcare or, or affordable housing or a lot of. Right. But one area where, where we uh, and our partners can make a difference is is around educational levels, and so. I actually think it's a really good time, uh, and we have a really good climate built around it right now and have a lot of hope. We have a governor who has made this one of his top priorities. Uh, he was at our launch event last fall, um, uh, and as you were, I believe. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's really tremendous. And, and his point is, well, you got to go on to some sort of post-secondary education, but it isn't necessarily college. Um, it might be the credentials that you right. talked about um, that are offered at the state colleges or at a private college or at the University of Vermont or through um, a CTE adult program at a CTE or even on the K-12 side through the CTE programs, the career and technical education programs. Um, and, and I think that that's a really important message. And having the governor of the state of Vermont say that uh, is really valuable. Uh, and having the partnership of his administration has been uh, great. It, and then the employer community says, you know, like I said, for many, many, and you noted, for many, many years, they've been saying we need more skilled labor. Yeah. Uh, they're they're saying we've got to do it now. Mm -hmm. And there's a partnership uh, based out of the Vermont Business Roundtable called the Talent Pipeline Management um, Project that is actually bringing on employers and saying, okay, what do you need? Uh, let's let's like kind of work backwards. What do you need in terms of skills for your the, the jobs that you need to fill, and let's let's map a pathway here, and let's bring in the educators right. to say how can we do this together, and it's it, so far shown pretty successful. That's so great. there's a lot of efforts out there that I think have set the climate for some real. I action. mean, I wondered about that because you know sometimes you get, you know, you might have. Empl I, I don't know if there's unanimity in terms of what what right. it is that the, they need at the employer level. I mean, right. I guess some of it's soft skills, like you know. Right. Even just showing up for work right. and you know, right. following instructions and working right. as a team and stuff like that. But sometimes it's like, okay, I want specific skills. Is there a, some kind of congruence or coming together? And what is it that we need to do as yeah. a state? Yeah, I mean, I th I think you're you're right. There's no simple answer to that, right. uh, and I think everyone will give a slightly different answer. But right. but mine is. Yeah, we hear more than ever that the soft, that what people call the soft skills are most important. Um, showing up on, on time, you know, putting in a good day's, day's work, understanding how to kind of work uh, in, a, in an office or on a work site or whatever it might be. And, and that that's really, really important. And that, that uh, employers feel like that's missing in kind of the workforce training side of things. Right. So that's one thing. And I feel like that's one thing that we can do. We can, we can figure out how to crack that nut. Um, but I do think that there's that you make a, a strong point about every employer is a little bit different. Um, sometimes it's they think they're more different than they they are. But in a lot of cases, you know this this manufacturing plant does things a little slightly different than this one, and so it's hard to kind of align what are those workforce needs, the training needs, right. uh, truly. And that's a challenge. But I think one that with like the talent pipeline management, where they're bringing in multiple employers to take on the construction trades, for example, or healthcare or advanced manufacturing, we'll try to say, okay, where are the areas where we can combine our efforts um, and get a certain base? And then one particular employer might need to go do a little bit more training. Yeah. And I mean, within the state colleges system, uh, certainly community college, Vermont Technical College, and actually Northern Vermont University in Castleton too are starting to work directly with employers to yeah. put together programs that 
serve their needs. Yeah. And we can, we can do both, you know, sort of generically get more people prepared with all the hard and soft skills, but also focus in with specific employers. And, you know, we see that as part of our future. I mean, yeah. you know, what we know is that just from a self-interest perspective in the Vermont State College system that, you know, uh, not only are there a, not enough of the high school, right. a, larger, a large enough percentage of graduates going on to college, but there are just fewer of them. Right. And there are 25% fewer students in 12th grade this year, this graduation year, than there were 10 years ago. Right. And that's consistent across, you know, Vermont, Maine, New Hampshire, and a lot of rural, uh, you know, yep. uh, America and Pennsylvania and Ohio and other places. So, you know, the numbers are, are, are getting smaller. Uh, we're going to continue to provide the high quality uh, liberal arts experience at Castleton and at Northern Vermont University combined with professional training and internships and then community college and Vermont Tech. So we're going to continue to serve the, the typical kind of students we have and give mm -hmm. them a great experience, but also you know, we need to actually serve that greater population you're talking about and working with employers, uh, you know, finding out, uh, you know, okay, we know that uh, the, the health area, allied health, nursing, yeah. occupational therapy, radiology, all those are such important areas. We need to be developing uh, uh, programs in those that are delivered in flexible formats, online, weekends, and so forth, to make sure that we can serve that non-typical student and are, are, are doing that as much as we can. I hope, I hope others yeah. are too. I think that's a really great point. And we're seeing this shift nationally as well. Um, and, and part of it's due to technology, but part of it's more of an awareness to say, we've got to meet students where they are. And so you know, you've got that opportunity when you're a senior where you, you may be able to go straight in to some sort of post-secondary education or training. But if you've got a family or a job or um, you know, need to have a steady stream of income, it's much more difficult to kind of find the right pathway for you. And so you know, the state colleges are doing a great job. Um, so Champlain College is another yes, great example yes. of, of, and there's many more in the state mm -hmm. where, um, where the higher education institution is saying, how do we meet our students where they are? How do we make sure that we're providing them with the flexibility to um, pursue their degree in a way that makes sense for them or their credential? Uh, and also to give credit for prior learning. And I think one real success story comes out of the state colleges yeah. f with prior learning assessments. So yeah. you can actually come in to uh, one of your schools and say, hey, look at all this experience I have, and can you help me uh, to turn that into some credits towards a degree or a credential? And I think that, that that's a tremendous opportunity mm -hmm. so that's, that folks understand and that we value the experience that you walk in the door with to one of our institutions. So we mentioned your website. We probably yeah. ought to mention the website of the Vermont State College yeah. System too. And if you were to go to our website, uh, you would quickly find how you can get to Castleton Community College of Vermont, North Vermont University, Vermont Technical College, and look up those, those uh, not only degree programs, but certificate programs. So yeah. if you go to vsc.edu, uh, you can easily get to all those. And your website again is uh, 70 by 2025 vt.org and we're on Facebook okay. and Twitter. And, oh, good. Yeah. And what around. will people find if they go to your website? I mean, what, what kind of resources would they find at your website, Tom? So on our website, you'll learn a little bit more about our initiative areas of, of focus uh, and uh, some resources to other, um, you know, kind of opportunities to, to pursue education. Um, and we're going to build that out to have more and more uh, resources for prospective students, okay. both youth and adults. And, you know, what, what are you thinking? In order to achieve the goal, 70%, and just to reemphasize, people say that's an awful lot, but th we're not talking about just, you know, bachelor's, master's, no. associate's degrees. We're talking about apprenticeships, yeah. all kinds of, of yeah. well, I don't know, what you what do you call it, meaningful post-secondary credential or something like that? Yeah, yeah, it's called something different. We call it credential value, but okay, it's, it's called something value. different so in every state. So 70%, and, you know, we're, not, we're, uh, we're talking another seven years. Yeah. What do we need to do to actually yeah. get there, Tom? Yeah, well, geez, we could go on for another half hour. Right. Easy. Uh, first, I, we might just start by saying, where are we now? Right. And we're at about 47% of Vermonters have a degree of any form. And then we think it's much more difficult to track, but somewhere between 5 and 10% of Vermonters have a credential. So okay. at best, we're somewhere around 55%, and we need to get that additional 15% by 2025. And where we're going to look is, is making sure that youth and adults have access to post-secondary education, that, the, that we break down the barriers to access whatever type of training that they want. 
um, and also that we make sure that they get on the right track right. in the first place so that they don't pursue something that ends up not being the right thing and then they burn some money and some time. Um, making sure that we do that for both youth and adults is really, really important. It's changing the public conversation through things like this to say uh, it's, it's not too late for adults to get back into it. And, and, and you, you got to continue. You know, there isn't a choice for, for high schoolers. You, you really have to continue. You're not done yet after high school. Um, and then it's bringing the employers together with the higher education community. Right. So since, you know, we're talking to we don't know who, we could be talking to grandparents, we could be talking to parents, we yeah. could be talking to students, uh, it is important to reemphasize again what we've just said is that, look, don't think that we're talking about you have to get a bachelor's degree. Yeah. You know, it could be some other meaningful credential. More and more, what we're doing is within the, co the community college and Vermont Tech and Northern Vermont University and Castleton is actually having some shorter form credentials, yeah. credentials of value, but they are credit bearing courses within it. So yeah. if you want to continue on later to get your degree, you've already got a, a good foundation. Yeah. And I often find people that say that, you know, they really, I mean, we do have an affordability problem and, and Vermont Student Assistance Corporation is all about helping people, mm -hmm. uh, you know, find out, understand how important it is to go to college, how to get there, how they can finance it and all like that. I really always like to emphasize Although it's expensive, there are ways to reduce your cost to go on to college. So if you're a grandparent, parent, or student, don't let the sticker price of education discourage you from, uh, from looking into it. Because yeah. if you plan ahead uh, and get creative, there are ways you can lower your cost. So yeah. uh, we want to make sure people do continue. Now, Tom, we're going to run out of time pretty soon. I'm kind of curious, you know, why was this an important initiative uh, for Tom Cheney to get involved with? Yeah, well, I come from a family of educators. Um, my mom's a teacher, my grandmothers were teachers, my grandfather was a superintendent and, uh, and worked uh, in the, the school or the College of Education and Social Services at the University of Vermont for many years. So education was always around me and I understood from a very young age the value of it right. um, and, and was always active in school. And so various jobs in government led me to have um, more opportunity to work in the education right. policy side. And, and then the workforce policy side, um, when I was the commissioner and deputy commissioner of the Department of Human Resources at the state and seeing it from an employer's perspective. Well, I'm really glad you're doing it. It is an absolutely critical uh, goal for the state of Vermont to have, and it's critical that we get there. Yeah. Uh, definitely, uh, please pass on our thanks to Scott Giles, the CEO of the Vermont Student Assistance Corporation, for taking this initiative and uh, you know giving it life. Uh, and this okay. Vermont State College system wants to do everything we can, Tom, to make sure that we are successful. It, our mission and your mission are, are totally aligned. Uh, it's critical, and uh, we will get there together. Well, thanks. You're a great partner. All right. Thanks for having me on. 70 by 2025 vtorg Viewers, I want to thank you for tuning in for this uh, edition of Higher Education Matters. Uh, you can see it on cable stations around the state of Vermont, and I want to give special thanks to Orca for uh, allowing us to use their studios to produce this program. Thanks for tuning in.